If you guys have been following us for long, you'd know that I've always been an Android guy. And while I love the Google experience on Android, I've been hearing some great things about Microsoft apps on the platform, even though I'm not sure how many people use it. So I decided to replace my most used apps with Microsoft apps. What's up guys, this is Rupesh from bvom.com and I've been using various Microsoft apps instead of the usual apps on my Galaxy S8. And today I'm going to share my experience with you guys. Before we start talking about Microsoft apps, I think you should hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we post new videos. Also, this video has been brought to you by Winscribe, a feature-packed VPN service. We have a great discount on Winscribe, so stay tuned till the end of the video to find out. Now then, let's get started. The idea of trying out various Microsoft apps striked me when the Microsoft Edition Galaxy S8 was announced. Well, the Microsoft Edition S8 is just your usual S8, but with Microsoft apps instead of the regular ones. So first, I made sure to just turn my S8 into the Microsoft Edition S8 by replacing my default apps with the Microsoft ones. Well, the first thing you can notice is the brand new home screen, right? Yes, that's the Microsoft launcher. Look, I've always been a Nova launcher guy, so I was a bit skeptic when it comes to Microsoft launcher. But boy, I've been impressed. I was honestly pretty surprised at how feature-packed it is. I mean, it brings almost every feature from the highly popular Nova launcher. There are some features that I use a lot on Nova Launcher and they're all here on the Microsoft Launcher. There's icon pack support, ability to change icon size, grid dimensions, hide apps, basically almost everything. Plus it has the gestures so I can set things just like I'm used to. By the way, gestures are paid on Nova Launcher. Also, I really love the Nova Launcher backup feature because I tend to switch a lot of phones for, well, you know, reviewing purposes. Well, guess what? Microsoft Launcher has that too. What it does not have is the Google Now page on the home screen, but it does bring a feed of its own that is ok -ish. You get calendar activities, the news, your recent activities, frequently used apps, etc. I'd say it's a mix of the Google Now page and the iOS widgets page. I didn't use it much and there's an option to turn it off, which is nice. Other than that, I installed Microsoft Launcher with very low expectations and I can tell you it's really, really good. Especially if you consider the fact that it's free in a world of paid and bloated launches. I don't know about the rest of the apps, but this is amazing. Now let's get to the Microsoft SMS Organizer app, which I must say is so handy. Especially because I get a lot of OTPs. Thanks to my habit of ordering food online a lot. I mean a lot. I know you can tell. Anyways, the point is when I get an OTP, the Microsoft SMS app shows it to me in a big clean notification with a copy button. So I can paste it right away without having to switch between apps. It's a godsend. The app also cleanly organizes personal, transactional and promotional messages separately. And the best thing is, it does not bring notifications for promotional messages. You have no idea what a relief it is. This is one Microsoft app I will be installing on every device that I use. So my experience with the Microsoft apps was going pretty good until I started using Microsoft Edge. Microsoft's attempt at making browsers is as good as Apple's attempt at making Siri useful. No hard feeling guys, just kidding. Now let's talk about what really went wrong. See the problem is I haven't had a great experience with Edge on my PC. So I wanted to see if things have improved. Well, they have and they haven't. I've used Edge on Windows Phone years ago and the great thing about it was the address bar placement on the bottom which is really handy on large phones. I was hoping for the same on Edge on Android but no. Microsoft just has to mess up its browser. I do appreciate the buttons on the bottom and that I can share a link from Edge on my phone to Edge on my PC, but I don't use Edge on my PC, so pretty useless. Also Edge is still in beta on Android, so the performance isn't perfect. So yes, Microsoft's decade-long problem with browsers continues. Since I mentioned about Siri a while ago, how can I miss using Cortana? And to my surprise, it actually proved to be pretty useful. Now, I'm not saying it's as powerful as Google's Assistant in handling all the queries, but it surely makes my experience better on my Windows laptop. That's because I don't use voice assistants much, but Kotana here brings notifications from my phone to my PC. It even lets me reply to messages from my Windows 10 laptop. It's also oh handy. Overall, I have a very positive outlook towards Kotana, which reminds me of another Microsoft app which I have a very positive outlook on. I'm talking about Outlook. Get it? 
On the side, Microsoft's Outlook email app has always been considered as one of the best third-party email clients. But I know what you're thinking. Gmail is great. Why do we need another email app, right? Well, trust me on this one. Outlook is worth a look. Someone like me who has a very cluttered inbox can get some real help with Outlook. I like how Outlook automatically categorizes my emails and only notifies me about the ones that matter. I also like that I can set reminders for emails and use swipe gestures which by the way are customizable unlike in Gmail. Plus Outlook is an app that packs in the power of four apps, a full-fledged calendar app, a cloud storage manager, a contacts app and obviously the email app. I know it sounds overwhelming but it's not, it's really well designed and it works really well. But typing all those emails requires a good keyboard app and that's where SwiftKey comes in. SwiftKey was the best third-party keyboard at a time, but then it became bloated and laggy. Well, things have improved under Microsoft's watch, and I still love the themes in SwiftKey and the plethora of customization options it offers. I just love Gboard a bit too much. Don't get me wrong, SwiftKey is good, but some of my favorite features are only present in Gboard, like the ability to send GIFs or emoji search. Plus, I just find Gboard's word prediction and autocorrection better. Microsoft should take note of these features. Talking of notes, I use Google Keep for all my note-taking needs. But I've been trying out OneNote to see if Microsoft's app can be a good replacement. Well, I'd say I have mixed feelings. I mean, OneNote is one feature-packed app. There's just so much good stuff here, but I just prefer Keep because of two reasons. First, Keep lets you recover deleted notes from the trash. And second, note reminders. Plus, OneNote just feels a bit overwhelming. Maybe it's the interface. I don't know what it is, but Keep just seems more easy to use. Maybe I'm used to it, but that's how I feel. Another app I'm used to is Google Drive, because it's deeply integrated in Android and other Google services. So how does Microsoft's OneDrive fare in comparison? When it comes to features, OneDrive is pretty much on par with Google Drive. Like Google Drive, I can use OneDrive to automatically upload my photos to the cloud. However, OneDrive only offers 5 GB of free storage compared to 15 on Google Drive. So that's a problem. Plus I can store unlimited photos in Google Photos via Google Drive. So OneDrive is not for me. Google Drive is simply the more practical option. Also because it's integrated in almost every other app on Android and offers more free storage. Other than that, I tried out a few not so popular apps on Microsoft. This Office Lens, which honestly is a great document scanner app. Apart from the usual scanning, the app even detects phone numbers from business cards and lets you save both the business card and the contact directly. So no need to keep physical business cards anymore. I also use Microsoft Hyperlapse, which I think is the best app to record time-lapse videos on Android. It lets you create stable time-lapse videos, plus there are a lot of options to play with, which is really great. Then I used Microsoft's Translator app, which is pretty similar to Google Translate, because they both have the same features like offline translation, voice translation, and camera translation. So those are some of the apps that I've been using for over a week now. Some have really impressed me, like Microsoft Launcher, the SMS Organizer, and the Outlook app. While some are decent, like SwiftKey Keyboard, OneNote, and Cortana. While some are just meh, like Edge. However, I'm honestly pretty impressed with the quality of apps that Microsoft offers on Android. I mean, Microsoft Launcher and SMS Organizer are now two of my favorite apps on Android. Yes, they're that good. And apps like Outlook just feel refined and mature, which is what you expect from a software giant like Microsoft. So I'd say Microsoft's mobile efforts are on the right track indeed. Plus, all of these apps are available for free. So I'd suggest you to try them and you might end up using them instead of the regular apps. Now let's talk about a sponsor for this video, Winscribe. Winscribe is a secure, fast and reliable VPN service with servers in more than 50 countries. And it offers a great free plan where you get 10 GB of usage every month. And you can use this 10 gigs for any purposes. There's no restrictions at all. There's also an unlimited access plan, which usually goes at $50 a year. But VWOM subscribers can get the unlimited plan for $30 a year. That's a discount of $20. I'd say it's worth it. You can get the offer from the link in the description below. So what Microsoft apps do you like? Are you using any Microsoft app that you love? Let us know in the comment section below. Also, give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends if you liked it. Lastly, subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. Well, that's me signing off. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.